Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. We are at the St. Paul Ice Show in the Euro Tackle booth and with Blake Tollison. Blake, how's the show going for you? It's been a good show. It's a little bit different than some other years, but overall it's been a pretty good show. Well, one of the reasons I want to have you on is because when it comes to catching fish with plastics, you're like, to me, you're like the legend. You're the guy when it comes to catching fish with plastics. And it's something that I want to learn more about. I'd love to get better at doing it because I feel like I really struggle with it. Yep. Can you just tell me a little bit about the benefits of fishing with plastics? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of benefits. For me, the big things are like, you're not stopping to buy bait. Like that's, you completely take that step out of the process. Every time you go fishing, there's not that detour to the bait shop. You have everything you need, it's in your tackle box already. Um, the, the most obvious one though, of course, it doesn't die. So yeah, there's lots of different options on the market. Um, but plastics, you literally you throw them in a bag, you do not have to worry about them. There's no, there's no bait management, there's no fancy aerators, fancy containers you gotta worry about. Yeah, the other thing that, that I've always been told by some of the other people that I know that love the plastics is they're like, I don't ever worry about if I'm missing bait. My jig's down below. Yeah. You're fishing with live bait you're like oh do i have this how many times do you pull up your jig and there's nothing on it it's, it's a real thing and with plastics you know it, it can happen but it, it just yep. doesn't happen as often yeah really the main thing you gotta worry about on the plastic side of things is maybe that fish move that plastic and you got to readjust it but it's that's a much faster process than actually you know pulling a pack of waxies out rebating that whole process somebody wants to get in fishing with plastics what do you recommend? How do you get started in, in doing this? They want to move off of the wax worm and the spike game. Yep, so biggest thing is don't give yourself the option. So only go with plastics. If you, you're a guy that you're used to using wax worms, you're used to using spikes, and you bring those with, you're like, oh, I'll try plastics, doesn't work out, you're gonna go right back to that. If you force yourself to only use plastics, you want to catch fish, it'll happen. So don't give yourself that option. That's like the biggest thing that I would say um, when I, first started using plastics that's exactly what I did I just I just quit bringing wax worm spikes along and that's it's all I use now for when it comes to panfish so if we're out shopping for plastics what should I be looking for if I want to start kind of putting an arsenal together yeah I mean you want to look at a variety of different things so it kind of depends on the specific species but in general um, a straight tail option Something that looks like a bug. Um, I really like bloodworm options. That's a lot of the crappies and bluegills, especially the ones that are out in the basins. They're you know, eating on things like bloodworms. So look for something that replicates those. Um, like I said, something that might look like a minnow, something that might look like a bug. That's kind of the, the main categories there. When I'm looking for color, like what should I be looking for for colors? So you're gonna walk around a place like this, you're gonna see literally dozens and dozens of color options. For me, there's three that matter most. That's black, white, and red. Why those three? Because you can use them in literally any scenario. So whether it's a clear body of water or a stained body of water, <clears throat> those will work across all types. There's, you know, there's times when you wanna grab something pink or chartreuse, something that really sticks out, uh, especially like in those stained environments, but you're only going to pick a couple, go with a, a black, a white, and a red. When I go with plastics, I'm usually going to put it on a tungsten jig, or maybe I'm going to tip some other type of hard bait with it. Yep. Do you normally like put a pink on a pink, or do you go for contrasting colors? How do you set that up? It really depends, but a lot of times I do look to contrast somewhat. So maybe I'm using a, a white jig head, I might throw a black plastic on there. Um, <clears throat> on the jig head side of things, I try to keep it pretty simple. You can, I mean, you like any other place you can go find tons and tons of different options, but you really only need a few colors, you know, your golds, your whites, your blacks, maybe you throw in a pink or a chartreuse, and then try to find something that contrasts a little bit. Um, just helps it stand out a bit against the background. A lot of times fish are feeding up, so it just gives it a little bit more contrast. All right, so how do I rig it? With, let's say I'm gonna go out with tungsten jigs. Yep. I'm gonna put this plastic on my tungsten jig. How do I set it up on the jig? Biggest Probably the biggest piece of advice when it comes to fishing with plastics is making sure that jig stays horizontal. <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab a jig here. Basically, you wanna make sure that that jig sits perfectly horizontal. So a lot of times you'll see a lot of new jigs, basically they have a line tie on the top, so it forces that to stay at kind of a 90 degree um, <clears throat> angle compared to your line. Um, you can tie snell knots, there's different knots, loop knots that you can tie to basically make sure that that jig stays horizontal, but that's probably the number one piece. Um, you know, if you're fishing with plastics and you're seeing, you keep getting snuff, you're seeing those fish on your mark them, they come up, they're not eating. A lot of times what it is is that your jig's actually um, 
not in the right scenario. Maybe it's vertical and it should be horizontal. So it's probably the number one piece of advice. How, how should I jig it? Is it different than that way I would use an action if I have live bait in my hook? I, for me, no. Um, <clears throat> typically, the approach, uh, regardless of what I'm using, start out aggressive, uh, especially if you're not seeing fish, you're not marking fish, uh, to call them in from a distance, really aggressive. And as those fish show up, um, keep that bait moving. I mean, realistically, what called those fish in was your moving bait. So you don't want to just freeze. A lot of times, they're not going to eat it. So make them chase a little bit, but you want to slow things down when you actually see fish. All right, tell me a little bit. Here I got fish. You talked about, about the angle of, of that hook, but if I got fish coming in and I just can't get them to close, yep. what do you recommend? It never hurts to try something different. Um, <clears throat> sometimes certain profiles, certain color options don't work well in specific instances, so maybe try something slightly different. Um, pay attention to the water clarity, the depth you're fishing, um, all of the, all of those kind of factors play a big role in how, you know, how well a certain color might show up at, at a specific depth. So pretty good. Is there yep. something I didn't ask you that you kind of want to bring up before we wrap up here? And really, the biggest thing with plastics or any artificials is confidence. If you do not have any confidence, if you go out, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna catch anything on this. You're probably not gonna catch anything on it. So if you really believe that you have the ability to catch something with plastics, you can. All right, you're here with Euro Tackle, the Euro Tackle booth. If people want to check out the Euro Tackle plastics, where do they go? Uh, if you're not here today, you can check us out at eurotackle.net. Eurotackle.net is the place to go to check out the Euro Tackle plastics, hard baits, full line of different stuff you can send down to catch panfish. He's Blake Tollefson. Thanks so much for joining. I'm Chris Larson. We'll talk to you next time.